Vanya. Long battery life is very crucial for leveraging the benefits of IoT. Picking the right connectivity for your product, for your user case, and integrating it really well is a big step in reaching that product longevity. Curious about IoT connectivity and energy efficiency, we teamed up with Thales to dig into the details of the cellular connectivity for IoT, and in specific, the energy consumption aspects of narrowband IoT and CAT-M. Big topic, we know, so we are doing this as a series, video series, where the experts from Thales and Cortec will be digging into the details, showing the technology, how it works, and what expectations you can have when it comes to the energy performance. So welcome to Tag Along. We start with an introduction to the topic, and we start this with Marcin, Director of Business Development, Thales. Hi, Marcin. Hi, Vanya. How are you doing? Everything good? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Good. So let's start this. This is really an um, important topic for us, and we're really curious about it. And from our experience and our quite a customer experience, we have learned that um, it can be really painful, and then by that I mean costly and uh, in time and money, uh, to deliver an inefficient product, energy inefficient product. And from your perspective, um, why is long battery life for IoT important? Yeah, so, so long battery life is important uh, for IoT, um, first because uh, um, it helps to enable the new use cases. Uh, so let's think about, uh, you know, the simple connected sensors uh, that are, uh, you know, powered by some low cost battery. From the other side, it helps also to reduce the device maintenance cost. Uh, so replacing the battery uh, is, uh, of course, always costly. Uh, you need to send technician uh, on site and that is the well-known problem uh, for example to the metering uh, industry uh, but the but the long battery lifetime uh, means also um, you know the optimized power consumption and that can make the devices to become smaller and smaller and which is of course also um, uh, an important aspect of the consumer IOT yeah for sure uh, well, there's an ocean of the connectivity options today, right? And they all serve different user cases. So why would you, like, why would cellular technology uh, be good for IoT? Can you explain a little bit more, like, why would you pick that and what is the kind of the right uh, connectivity to consider? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. So, so the cellular technology operates in the in the license spectrum, right? So, and and can provide the very reliable uh, connection in terms of the uh, network stability. Uh, it allows the application to work under harsh conditions, uh, communicate on the on the long distance, or operate in uh, you know very crowded uh, environment. Of course, not every uh, cellular technology fits each uh, use case. Uh, so therefore, it's so important to understand uh, the use case itself and uh, uh, its requirements. Oh. So tell us a little bit more about the narrowband IoT and CATM. Uh, what are the differences and what do you need to consider when you are picking the connectivity, especially then from the energy efficiency perspective? Yeah, so 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 the the the, the very important uh, uh, thing to understand first is, uh, of course, uh, you know how frequently and and how much data uh, you, you need to exchange, uh, and uh, you know the CAT M it was designed, uh, you know, to operate efficiently with with small data. And NBIoT is more like the message-centric uh, uh, technology. To give you an example, uh, if we consider um, some application that uh, um, need to exchange the information from the sensors, like you know the batch of the sensors, uh, maybe some uh, logs uh, that are captured it will land more on the CAT-M. Uh, while for um, smoke detector, um, this uh, operates with the very limited, uh, exchange the very limited data, and that would be more suitable for, for NBIoT technology. 
uh, of course, we we talk about the CAT M if uh, it comes to some mobility aspects uh, for trackers, for smart watches, um, and uh, so any extra feature that one technology has and another doesn't uh, uh, will play important role too. Um, another aspect uh, uh, is the availability of the technology uh, in the region, uh, which is constantly improving, but uh, there are places where only one or even no technology uh, is available today. How does this compare to 2G? I think that's usually kind of a burning question. <laughs> yeah, always. So that's, that's, that's very interesting. So in fact, the 2G uh, doesn't offer all the uh, latest power consumption features, you know, PSM, EDRX, uh, but it doesn't mean that uh, 2G cannot be still, uh, you know, optimized uh, to work efficiently. Uh, so in fact, the many devices are still working on 2G. Uh, we can name the panic button, uh, you know, the metering. Uh, so this uh, mm, deployment of the of the CAT M uh, and NBIoT uh, network may still require in some cases the 2G uh, connectivity, for example, to fill the gap um, uh, if you if you consider some application uh, that required the, the, the global coverage. Uh, but there is a one important aspect uh, of the um, uh, of the uh, that CAT M and NBIoT technology um, uh, have uh, as an advantage over over 2G. This is uh, about uh, the the efficiency uh, when it comes to the massive deployment of the um, uh, devices in the network. So with the different uh, sleep modes, the network can better organize the resources uh, thanks to dynamic uh, timers that module negotiates with, uh, with the network. So your customers obviously want to deliver really high quality products and they should be long lived. And uh, our customers want to do that as well. But like, how sure. do you do this as a company? Like, how do you uh, make sure that in your product <coughs> development, you are having this mindset of uh, low power? Yeah, so, so at Thales, we put the high attention uh, to the proper hardware design. Uh, so at the early stage, uh, we spend enough time testing our products with different uh, components, uh, uh, you know, to evaluate and qualify best combination uh, that proves the minimum power consumption. Uh, and of course, that gives the, the, the enough longevity in the design. So our development team um, uh, uses well-equipped facilities and, and uh, is, is capable to you know, test, measure uh, uh, all relevant parameters uh, on the module. And uh, thanks to, um, to the measurement equipment that you offer, so, so this, let's say, extra performance of, of our module uh, can, can now be well recognized uh, by the customers. So, yeah, so using the, the, the Coitec uh, measurement tool um, uh, will, will help to optimize the application performance running with our module. And I think that's uh, there is there is a um, you know the significant saving in the total cost of ownership that customer uh, can make just by optimizing the power consumption of uh, the device. Yeah, for sure, and we we see this with our customers as well. Like the things tend to go much faster and the products get much better when you uh, don't need to firefight all the time. And with the energy consumption and responsibilities shared across the disciplines and throughout the whole product life cycle. So it's, it's a mindset definitely. And to have this mindset, we have seen in our customer base that it's really changing from just going from the hardware development into also software development and different stacks of the software development, production and field testing. And people are thinking much more that this needs to be like everybody's responsibility when it comes to energy optimization. Absolutely. So we, we, we also see that, uh, in fact, more and more MNOs uh, uh, take the power consumption as uh, an important aspect, right, of, of the proper integration to the network. Uh, some of them started to request the power profile of the module and, and, and are testing it. Uh, so, so I know that you collaborate with, with, with some of the network operators. So can you say a little bit more about this uh, partnering? Yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. And we, we, we do actually, we are partnering with uh, Deutsche Telekom and we're partnering also with AT&T and we definitely see how important this is for them and uh, how they are um, making sure that uh, everything that is coming into their network is really energy optimized. They have really high ambitions in uh, getting uh, companies to understand that this is really important for, for, for the network. It's important for their own um, uh, business as well, right? The uh, those who are providing devices and those who are actually using devices, and of course the MNOs as well. So it's it's um, uh, it it has changed quite a lot, and I uh, it's a Absolutely. very positive change, very yeah. positive change indeed. So um, when it comes to the uh, narrowband IoT and then cat up products, how how does one start? Like, what do you? How would your customer like approach you, and how would you approach your customer and say, okay, this is how you should kind of start uh, working with these um, modules and with this type of technology? Oh, yes. Yeah. So, so the, we can provide to, to our customers uh, the hardware that is, that is suited to their needs, right? So for those who want to, for example, quickly build uh, the prototype, we offer the LGA development kit uh, that allows them to um, to connect any type of, of, of our module um, and, and to access all the hardware interfaces. Uh, uh, this is a fantastic, easy to use uh, tooling that uh, requires only 10 minutes to unbox uh, and, and send the first uh, 80 command. So finally, we provide uh, the module in the different form factor. It could be a terminal, which is uh, you know the certified uh, or Already fully certified, uh, working out of the box, uh, or the data card that uh, helps uh, in the integration effort, or the the, the standard LGA uh, module, and for that we can we can uh, uh, offer the dedicated uh, um, OT file. Uh, which is which is made with the with the Quitec uh, device uh, and that uh, um, contains all this uh, uh, information about uh, the power profile. So with with this approach, uh, uh, we think we can uh, help to com compare the reference uh, energy consumption uh, with the with the device design. Uh, I think it's uh, also worth to mention the Thales uh, uh, support package offer. Uh, so here our expert can, um, uh, you, you know, the support uh, the customer design, bringing some uh, know-how and experience uh, from the field. Mm, very cool. And yes, we are very glad that you guys are also using the OT files as as part of your energy consumption performance documentation. And I think it's extremely crucial for the customers to have this kind of good reference because they are in mm -hmm. for a development project and integration that is quite complex. Mm. And they, it's a good starting point to understand uh, what they are using and what they're going to be kind of getting out of it. So very, very good. Um, yeah, so I think this is this is it for this the per, kind of first introduction. I uh, thank you very much, Marcin, for the valuable tour of this uh, cell IoT and the energy efficiency. I am really looking forward to going into the hands-on details on this topic, and we will do this with uh, your and our expertise. Um, and it is going to be a, quite a lot of fun, I hope. Yeah, thank you very much. So I'm happy about our uh, cooperation. Uh, so yeah, join us all. Stay tuned for more. Yeah, indeed. Stay tuned thank for you. more, all of you. Thank you.